Mathematician Project. Georg Cantor, 1845 to 1918. Georg was born in 1845 in St. Petersburg, Russia. Georg's father was a wealthy member of the St. Petersburg Stock Exchange. Suddenly, when Georg's father took ill, Georg and his family moved to Frankfurt, Germany. Georg then graduated from Rila Schule, our equivalent to high school. With his father's approval, Cantor went to the University of Zurich, but soon transferred to the University of Berlin. Soon thereafter, he filled a lecturing position at the University of Halle, where he spent out the rest of his career teaching. Cantor was soon married to Valley Gutman, and they had six beautiful children together. Although most of his time was devoted to his work and his mathematical discoveries, we will now go through the basic operations of Cantor's set theory. The four basic operations are union, intersection, relative complement, and complement. Union. Union is used to combine sets. For example, a set of 1 and 2 and a set of 3 and 4 combine to get a set of 1, 2, 3, and 4. But you do not list elements twice. Intersection. Intersection is used to find common elements. For example, a set of 1, 2, 3, and a set of 2, 3, and 4 have a common element of 2 and 3. But no common element is a blank set. Relative complement. Relative complement is used to subtract sets. For example, a set of 1, 2, and 3 subtracted by a set of 1, 3, and 4 cancels out to equal just a set of 2. But you must remember that order is taken into account as of in all subtraction. Complement. Complement is used to leave out elements. For example, 1 and you know, never mind, basically the same thing as relative complement, forget about that one. Cantor also made many other mathematical discoveries. For example, he came up with one-to-one -one correspondence. He found ordinal numbers. He came up with the continuum hypothesis. Cantor proposed the infinite infinities theory. It is also said that he was the first person with any kind of swagger, but this is unknown. Let's take a closer look to infinite infinities. Infinite infinities. To better understand Cantor's theory, let's list the possible numbers between 1 and 2. You have 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, and so on. But you also have subsets of those, like 1.01. 1.02, 1.03, 1.04, and so on. But you also have subsets of the subsets, like 1.001, and so on. So if it goes on forever, can't we say there's an infinite number of solutions between 1 and 2? And if so, what about 1 and 3? Aren't there more numbers in between 1 and 3 than 1 and 2? If 1 through 2 is infinite, and 1 through 3 is infinite, and 1 through 2 is less than 1 through 3, is infinity less than infinity? These theories and questions baffled Cantor, and he eventually discovered that there are multiple levels of infinity. With recent tragedies going on, like his wife and son dying, and all these mathematical possibilities going through Cantor's head, he eventually ended up in multiple sanatoria, where he eventually died in 1918. Georg Cantor professor, philosopher, mental patient, and one beast of a mathematician. Thanks for watching.